What is up, guys and girls? Today is the day we're gonna start the install of the best suspension you can get for your MQB car. We have the Brookline front subframe and their uh, modified kinetic front arms. These arms, they make a version that work with regular steel and aluminum subframes and then they make this version that only works with this subframe. Um, I'm gonna need the old lady's help getting these rubber um, boots on these ends. It's actually pretty tough to do. Um, we got a whole bag of hardware here that we get to figure out where that goes. Brackets for the, um, what are they called? The level sensors, because uh, my steering rack gets raised up, my sway bar gets raised up, and uh, where these arms sit get raised up. So you gotta use different brackets to uh, accommodate for everything being raised up some. Um, yeah, so first things first, I'm actually, it's time for, I've had two events with these on the front, so I'm gonna rotate front to back real quick and then lube up my rear sway bar because it probably needs it. And then after that, we're gonna get to work. Um, I didn't want the car, it doesn't even matter. I don't need to explain why the car's sideways, but that's just the way it's gonna work out today. I've had the hood open for a while. Trying to get things to air out. Shout out to Racing Life, that little box. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna knock out my little maintenance things and then we'll actually get to work. It is almost too dang hot to be doing this. Look at this, uh, 91, yeah, real feel, 99. Earlier, that said 103. Finally starting to cool down. But all I did was rotate tires, grease my sway bar, and uh, put the car on jacks. But anyway, let's actually get started on this. First thing I'm gonna do is loosen up the end links, um, the collars, top and bottom, because these are gonna need readjusted since the sway bar is gonna be moving higher. And then I'm gonna disconnect it from the strut um, because the sub is gonna drop. I'm just gonna leave it connected at the bottom and uh, then we'll readjust once the car is on the ground and settled. We'll uh, readjust preload here. But we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna drop down here and undo these ball joint um, nuts. And then there's a nut right up in there. We're gonna get that out and then we're gonna get this ball joint out because obviously we're swapping ball joints. So this ball joint is the 034 one that adds um, like 1.2 degrees of camber. And I got a buddy who's gonna be picking this up along with the 034 subframe inserts. So we're gonna get those out, get those ready for him. Um, you definitely gotta make sure, we gotta take these covers off, get these um, sensors off, and make sure we don't break those. We got new brackets for these. You see where it connects to the subframe. So we gotta take note of that. I'm actually gonna take a picture of my phone. That way we know the orientation on each side. And then from there, um, it's not too terrible. We leave these on, we leave the arms on. We'll take off these brackets on both sides. We'll take off the bracket here for the downpipe, the dog bone entirely, and then all that same stuff on the other side. Um, the oil level sensor actually doesn't route the same way as previous generations, but on the last gen, your oil level sensor, um, it came up this way and it came up through the subframe, right? Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's different. Yeah, Cause I just did this the other week so, and I had to like make sure I routed it all nice and neat. So that's something different between the Mark 7 and Mark 8 or 8V and 8Y. Um, and then we'll do one, two, there's two of these on the other side as well for the sway bar. And then I believe it's this one right here for the steering rack, one on each side as well. So all that will get dropped and then we have four bolts to hold the subframe in and then we'll put a jack under the car, lower it down, slide it out, and then we'll weigh it, compare it to the other one, and go from there. Let's, uh, let's get to it. You can see here we got the end links off, we got the ball joint nuts off, next up. We are doing this 
here level sensor so we don't want to breaking it there's just a little 10 mil right there and a connector and after that you can um, just kind of roll this is like a ball in here literally just kind of bend it back and twist it and it pops right off okay so I just got that 10 mil off we will get this bad boy over like I said you guys just kind of twist and bend pops right off all right so next up I'm doing these right here um, trying to back up you got your two 13s for your sway bar and then this is a 21 and then these are also 21 for these brackets and then this is also a 13 there's two of those a bunch of 21 so you got one two three four five six seven 21s and then this is an 18 in the dog bone and then you got one two three four five six 13s so two four sway bar and then two for your bracket and then after that right up here's one and then the other one is oh right here for this this is the other one so we actually won't um Actually, yeah, we, we will go ahead and take those out, and then the front ones will be the last ones we take out. Hopefully, this is a decent angle. Uh, my GoPro clip is magnetic, so I have you sitting on my exhaust right now. <sighs> anyway, we got all the 13s out. We're going to move on to the 18s. pain to get to what? Oh, so the these back ones here you guys can't see them for the bracket they are not 18 they are much smaller they look like a 16 so I'll have to grab a different one but we can grab these big ones and they hold these brackets and they also are the ones that hold the subframe in so those and we can move on to the dog bone rear and front dog bones I'm gonna mark these so I know I don't know if it, the kit came with new ones so rear and front now that we got those marked can get to these bad boys right here they are 16s kind of got to bend this plastic out of the way and we won't be needing those ever again these will go to kyle which will probably use his own or whatever this subframe is already sold to my boy kyle he called it sorry everybody won't be asking in the comments if you can buy it Already all right those are right out of the way now we can get this last dog bone Boom. the other insert out once uh, the car is on the ground it's kind of a pain yeah. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that right now so oh yeah we're still gonna do these bad boys forgot about those so we'll knock the steering rack out next Mark those as SR. All right. So now, basically, there's only two bolts holding the subframe in. We'll uh, shoot me the jack up here, 
Get it nice. Uh, hello. How's it going? Are you Amazon? Yeah, I got two packages. I'm going to leave right here for you. That's perfect. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Uh, like I said, we'll get the jack under here and then uh, undo those two. You get them through the control arm here. And then, uh, yeah, we'll drop it down, slide it out. We'll get these ball joints out. And then, uh, then we'll start assembling the subframe. Not too bad. Wow. As soon as I hit the play button, I drop it. Hey, beating up my GoPro this weekend. All right. I know it's going to be loud, but let's see if these arrow covers kind of makes it a pain. Got my big gun. Ready? Oh, yeah, there goes the GoPro. Dang it. Sorry, guys. All right, we got all the hardware out, I think. Um, probably get this arm out of the ball joint still. But uh, I have a jack here ready to sit the steering rack on. It'll pretty much, I mean, it'll sag down a little bit, but um, every time I've done subframe or trans jobs or you gotta do, I don't know, it just hangs there, it's fine. Um, I said there's no wiring to worry about for the oil level sensor on like a, the Mark 7 and probably the 8V. Um, you'll have that so you'll have to unplug it and like route the wiring through the subframe to like the exhaust side so it doesn't get caught when you're lowering it but i'm looking around here i don't see any only wiring i see is for the the trans and the um the steering rack so i think we're good to go find out in a moment not sure if I'll use this clip. As you can see, my jack is sitting on the like right under where the dog bone uh, bolt would go. I'm just gonna lower it down little by little, checking to make sure we're not hung up on anything. No wires are getting stretched or anything like that. Start. starting to lean one side's coming down way faster than the other so we'll make sure that our end links aren't caught on anything both sides very possible okay. pushing up on it I think just because most of the steering racks on one side Oh yeah, okay, so there's that. I think this side has that, so this side, if you can see up there, you got this little plastic, it, it's like a push pin type thing into the subframe. Yeah, it's a push pin. So we'll go around, we'll grab the tool and pop that out. I don't, yeah, that's, um, a wiring harness shield so that's what we we gotta disconnect it's not really pulling on it much i can feel it there's like no tension on it yet so definitely okay and that's on the driver's side i'll get around the other side get a better look so we're looking in the driver's side it just kind of pops into the top of this so the steering rack has like little the word's not coming to me right now. It's basically machined at the bottom of it so that it actually fits into the subframe. And since the subframe wasn't coming down even, the, um, you know, since it's inside the subframe and it was kind of cocked, it was trying to come down with the subframe. So one side was staying cocked up. So I pulled down on the side that was higher. I pulled it down towards me and then used my other hand to push up on the um, steering rack to pop it out of the subframe. And now the whole thing seems like it wants to come down. We shall find out right now. So I kind of like push up on this and put my hand through here and push the sub or the uh, steering rack out of the subframe. Now this should come down without too much fight. It's very uneven, but oh yeah, we are good. 
Doesn't look like anything's touching now. Yep. I don't know how much you guys can see. You can't at all. Let me, uh... Now we'll slide the subframe out and get the jack under that steering rack so it's not just hanging. Not too bad. Alright, this is very difficult to weigh. I should have took a clip here of when the uh, I had it laying down with the other with the arms on it. It says 14.7 for the subframe. That's still with some hardware on it. So there's that. Came out to 30. 0.5 with everything so we'll see this says 14.7 we'll weigh the arms by themselves and add it let me write that down 14.7 this is like pretty difficult to do so i'll show you guys the way i did it so so my hand this one here if it's gonna work it says 200.7 last time it said 99.7 let me try it again. Only because of the GoPro. GoPro might be a pound. Let's see, 199.3. Okay, and we'll do it without it in my hands. Ah. 165. So you add 30 pounds, it takes you to 195.7. So, yeah, about, about 33 and some change somewhere in that nature either way i mean you save save a three whole pounds but i suspect if you weren't if you kept these arms and put them on this that would be the optimal weight savings but really it's just a byproduct i didn't even weigh everything because this doesn't have the uh like if you threw in the brackets that we took off that we no longer need and the uh subframe insert that still counts i mean it ain't much but Cold pass. Not bad. All right. Now that the weighing is done, we have a handful of small things to do. First thing I'm going to do is get the level sensors onto their new brackets. And then I'm going to get the rubber boots onto these ends. And then after that, I need to get the ball joints out of the knuckle, which is going to be a pain. And after that, we can loosely install these arms onto the subframe. Um, I might need to take two pieces of two by four and um, screw them together because I don't want my jack scratching up the subframe. So I think if I can get all that done, I can call it a night. And then, uh, yeah, and then tomorrow, install it, adjust it. And hopefully Friday get in alignment. I'm thinking of calling Friday off because quick rant. Huge GameStop guy. GameStop's doing a four to one stock split on Friday. I have some call options on AMC and GameStop. Looking to make some big money. And at work I don't have good service. So thinking I'll take off and figure out any last minute adjustments I need to do before hopefully getting alignment. Alignment shop called three times a day, left messages, didn't answer. Don't know if they're sick today or what. They're kind of a small shop. So maybe they'll answer tomorrow and get me in on Friday so I could finish this up. You know, I'll be able to watch my stocks and get an alignment on Friday. But uh, anyway, let's go grab my iPad so we can look at the digital instructions and go from there. One of my favorite Jason Aldean songs. So over here, following said instructions. Good thing we marked them left and right because the brackets matter. So as you can see, this is the new bracket versus the old bracket. I don't know exactly if it's shorter or longer or what, but this is what the old one looks like when it's installed. You can see it has that little like inserted area, all that. And then this is what the new one looks like. It has a welded screw in there, some bracing. So I'm swapping these over, pretty simple. It's just a T20 right on those two guys. Swap it over to the new one. And I believe where these go into, we will add little ball, like little connectors for that into the, this side of these two brackets. But we're not there yet. All right, 
I was not wrong. It's a little tricky. You got to use a couple brain cells if you got any left. So you look at the way the arm, this arm attaches to this. It only goes on, it's kind of offset. It only goes on one way. This goes this way. The bracket, I mean, it can't go, the holes won't match up. So clearly this only goes on one way, right? It has this little notch. I'm showing you guys so you don't have to use as much brain power, I guess. So this will go just like that. Boom. And then the knob ends, which are right there, go facing out. So it'll be like this, and then the knob will be facing out. So we'll get those connected. And then I got a little bit of Loctite on those. These will pop in right here. And then uh, we're done with that part. Seems pretty easy. All right, so the brackets are all on. I did put two of them on, but I picked up the wrong bracket and put it on the wrong way. So I had to correct myself. But if you look, if you take your, if you set these up, like you're looking at your subframe, it's on the ground. You always just go down and look like, oh, ball joint facing backwards, easy. So this is how they're supposed to be. Um, hopefully I did these right. Pretty sure I did. So this is the right side. You better look at it if you need the assistance. And on the left side. Boom. So there's that. I went ahead and figured out what all hardware goes where. So they give you these two thicker bolts um, that these go over. And I was test fitting it on the subframe because it raises up the steering rack, like I said. So these. Go in here and they said they're supposed to be loose to give you wiggle room to get the bolt because the bolt has to be pretty much straight to go in and as you can see we'll just sit under here real quick um like i said it sits into the subframe so that goes over this and then it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to uh cause that's a long way for the bolt to go to thread in and you have to literally have it dead on otherwise you're going to strip it so keep that in mind and then I went ahead also and figured out all the rest of the hardware. So you got your two Allens and then your one and then uh, the special ones like this, they go to the arms. Now the only thing I figured out so far that's wrong with this kit is that they got powder coat on the inside of this and the, the tolerance is so tight. So I had to take a little bit of a file, file away the um, paint to get that to go through. And it's incredibly tight so next up i'll get this side done real quick get this one attached i'm not torquing anything down yet and then i'm going to get these ball joints out of the car call the old lady down to put these on because they are a pain in the ass to do by yourself and then i'm calling it a day and tomorrow we'll install everything on here it also shows um it shows here it says one full revolution of the rod end will give 0.15 degrees of camber and one full revolution of the other one will give 0.32 degrees of caster. I need to look up and see what OEM alignment specs are because it gives you here a measurement. You can go in, see that, and use your little doohickey to measure the starting point and then do, do the math. How many revolutions do you want per camber or caster? Um, caster is going to be tricky. I think on my last, on my Golf R, I had 9 degrees of caster and 3.2 degrees of camber. And I don't want to go that far. So I'm trying to aim right. Oh, well, I, I want that about that amount of camber. So we're aiming from right at 3 degrees of camber, 3.2 max. And then caster, like I said, I had 9 degrees and it rubbed. So aim for like 8.5 maybe. 8.5 degrees of caster, 2 point, or 3.2 degrees of camber. And hopefully... You know, we'll, we'll do some driving around the neighborhood at my estimated home alignment settings, see if it rubs. If it doesn't, um, obviously we're good to go. We'll go to the alignment shop and then just dial it in. Hopefully it'll be within one turn um, to get everything even. Yeah, pretty excited.
and then they have all the torque values in here so this shouldn't be too bad it does say for the left hand side um, where does it say right here on vehicles equipped with DSG or tractonic transmission the left hand horizontal bolt cannot be completely removed at the location of the transmission you will need to unbolt the pendulum or dog bone mount at the subframe to swing the engine forward to get what I'm assuming is this bolt but we'll see once the car is up. Yeah, I think it's this one. It'll be this one that you can't, or no, actually on the other side. Yeah, it'll be this one that you can't. I should have looked beforehand, but, um, so that would be this, to get this out to adjust that. So you would either have to do the dog bone side, or you'd have to like disconnect the ball joint and this, and swing it out of the way and rotate this. So I think. That's just using a little bit of brain power I have left for the day. <laughs> Here's something to note, because you're gonna have to cut the zip ties on these to get these rubber boots on. So the ones on the single arm, whatever you wanna call it, these ones are shorter than the other ones. See that, can you guys see that? Shorter. Longer ones go on this one, okay? Okay. We have 7% battery. Hopefully we can get it in this clip. So it takes two people with three tools and some WD-40. I'll show your tools real quick. You got her mini pliers, my mini long boys. And uh, let me show you what happens here. But I start out with these really long ones. So you hold this, you have been. So I go through the side, down to the bottom, then I open it up. And then as I spread this to go on, she's grabbing the other two sides to make it more square. Because right now it's just like, like that, and she's grabbing the two opposite sides to open it up. And then it squirts some WD-40 in, and it seemed to pop right on. So hopefully this is... Almost out of battery, right? Mm -hmm. I should bring it down a little bit lower. Okay. Right. First one we try and get on camera. Oh no! Well, we ripped one. We're at one percent. I just lubed it. <laughs> Keeping it. Woo! Boom! See? That was a good one. That one slid on. Caught my finger, too. Kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> but now we got some nice dust boots to hopefully keep these uh, living a little bit longer. This side ripped a little bit. I think I had two on the back that ripped, too. It's not a huge deal. I'll still keep probably most of this shit out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, day two. Probably not gonna be able to finish today because we got this family dinner tonight and my alignment people won't answer the dang phone. Two days in a row, six phone calls, two left messages, and no callbacks. So it's kind of upsetting. upsetting. I wanted to go out and mess around this weekend, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Anyway, I just got the ball joints out. Went to Harbor Freight, got me a semi-cheap ball joint tool 
looks like this. I had to um, widen this up some for the 034 joints. If you're using, if you're on OEM joints as is, uh, just a, a pickle fork in there, hit it at the right angle, they pop right out. I had to use this with an impact. Um, note to you, if you do gotta use an impact on that stuff, put the nut back on it first so when it does finally explode and pop out, it doesn't scare the shit out of you. It, uh, that, that nut will keep it from hitting the ground with extreme force. So <laughs> next up, I have a piece of paper. On there, it tells you the measurements for the rod length. And what I did, I looked up a stock alignment, which I can put on the screen here. So based off of that stock alignment and their um, instruction saying it's X amount of camber and caster per turn, I did the math. It's supposed to be, let me show you what I did. Um, so aiming for about 3.1 degrees of camber. I didn't want to go over. So either way, it's just rough. We'll probably have to adjust anyway. So I was thinking it'll be 10 turns from their setting there and to achieve um, however much caster there, 8.2 8 degrees of caster is three turns and 8.58 .8 is four turns. I'm, that might not, that's just my initial settings. So what I'll do is I'll use this tool right here. I'll measure and show you guys so you don't even have to count. You can just measure to this length for each one and that'll be a decent starting point for you, hopefully. Um, I just, I wanna add, I wanna have as much caster as possible without rubbing. And camber, like hey, anywhere around above, close as to 3.2 as possible, but I mean 3.15, 3.1, whatever, that works for me. So, but before we do that, I'm gonna get this dog bone mount in, and it's pretty simple. Um, it goes in, so it goes in like this. The hump is up pump up, put it through. You can see we have like this area. This is where this goes. So this is gonna sit in there like that. So you're gonna put the dog bone mount in, put this in, and you put this in. Pretty interesting. And this obviously will tighten up against this. And it adds a, it's like, yeah. It takes up that, that extra bit of space that's in there. So that's pretty neat. Take this, slide her on in, line it up, put this in, line that up, approximate, put this up, slide this through. One of these is not lined up. Oop, oh, then knock the camera over. Hasn't even met the thread yet. Some so, see, there we go. By the way, guys, I super apologize if some things are dark. The GoPro just doesn't pick up dark things all that well. But what we're gonna do is, I got this block of wood here, not even a block of wood. I'm gonna lay this across here to help uh, balance the subframe when we go to lift it up. But now I'm actually gonna take my measurements and bring the rod ends out and then loosely attach everything to the subframe where it's supposed to be. If you have the modified Kinetics, you use this top um, section. You have this washer on the bottom, which is zip tied right now, but this, this spacer goes on the bottom. And then you have all those um, spacers that go on. We'll be able to loosely attach the uh, sway bar on there and loosely attach the arms, obviously, and the, uh, the ball joints. It'll be interesting all right guys looking at the tool here we are right on the 12 mark um, using this side going from up against the nut to where the first thread starts it's about four thread count that's what it comes out to 
And now we'll go ahead, I did this side, this one already. So I gotta measure this one and then I'll copy it to this one and then we'll loosely install it on the arms. So about 12 mil or four threads for the toe. All right, so on here, I said it's 19 mil and nine threads. It's really hard. I can't tell if the camera is really focused up. So the first little divot on here, it isn't like an actual thread. I'm using, I have a little bit of a nail. So what I'm clicking on right now isn't what I'm counting. I'm counting actual, the down part of the thread, the lower part of the thread, nine up, up until this last one where my fingernail is, that is nine. So count nine downs. I'm not counting what's up in the air. I'm counting where your fingernail goes down into is nine. And the same thing over here on these is four that your fingernail falls into. That's where I'm starting out at. And I don't know if I'll, because I want this alignment video out, um, you know, on Monday just to show the install. And I don't know when I'm going to get an alignment at this point. So I might need, a, you know, one or two more screws on either side. And I'm, I don't know if I should wait till I get an alignment and then I can put that in here or make another video talking about the alignment or just update in the comments um, what extra alignment steps I had to do in terms of turning these. But this should be a good, fairly freaking close alignment. But we'll see. At least for toe or uh, camber and caster will still need to obviously adjust toe up on the rack but we'll see now i'm going to start um lightly installing everything on the subframe so showing you guys something i just struggled on for probably half an hour 45 minutes so you see this lip on the boot okay and you got this lip on the washer you need to get this section of rubber over top of that otherwise this section gets stuck under it and this doesn't compress enough you literally these are per precision like st the most precise things i've ever seen like they, you can't even get a piece of paper in between the, the spacers and where they go into the subframe you have zero room zero room so i was doing it dry like a dummy soak these boots in wd-40 and it goes in way easier these first front ones i struggled and it was rough so definitely uh loop these babies up it'll make your life easier song check this new little luke combs album is baller i love it so now that we got the arms on and in place <laughs> i really hope i got this like within the spec that i want because taking these back off well, now that I know what to do, excuse me, it won't be as bad. Now you guys know if you ever go to do this, but it's going to be not fun if you got to adjust it, which I know I will, but whatever. Next up, I'm going to put the sway bar softly installed um, with this modified kinetics kit. Now mind you, if you don't get the modified kinetics kit, you don't have to deal with these spacers, but they come with longer hardware and these spacers on all four and then like I showed you guys earlier, you get spacers for the rack as well. So now I'm gonna sit the sway bar on top and get them threaded in. Then from there, uh, I guess I'll put it on the jack. I don't know if I should put the um, ball joints on there yet or not. I don't know if I'm gonna install the ball joints into the knuckle and then into the arm or arm and then knuckle. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not there yet, I guess. We'll see. All right, guys, we're making progress. Hopefully you guys are able to keep up with me here. I'm trying to be as detailed as possible without being annoying. So everything's on. I can see how stiff these are already. Like, <laughs> So I tried to balance this out on this block of wood. I need to move it back I had to rotate. But uh, that's basically what it's gonna be. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit because it's gonna hit the bumper and then just slide this bad boy under the car start jacking up it says to do opposite corners so either a front left or right and then do the opposite um, to start and then get those started in hand tight um, I said I think about 10 mil 
and then take your jack away and let it free float. From there, we'll work on getting the rack lined up. And then once we get the rack lined up, we'll put the other corners in. And then uh, and from there, it's just, you do go corner by corner. So you'll do like front and then this, and then this, and then that. You just keep going in a pattern until it's up and snug. And then, uh, yeah, from there we'll finish tightening the rack down all the way, sway bar all the way. I don't know what we do from there. We figure out our ball joint situation. Um, I did have to take the 10 millimeter um, little bolts here from the other subframe to hold the level sensor. And I still don't know what these are for, so I'm probably gonna take these off. It said something about have, having additional mounting for lights, but I don't think it says anything specifically. I don't think these need to go in here. That's about, about all I got. So far, so good. And at some point, we gotta tighten this nut. I think once we tighten this up to the car, like to the transmission, then we tighten the center bolt, and then we tighten this last, I think. And we'll go over that when the time comes. There's also this little spot here for something. I have no idea what that's for. Um, Looks like there's some spots here for threads and stuff. Uh, I think that's uh, where you can do your skid plate mounts to these if you have a skid plate. But we don't, so. There's that. Day three. <laughs> Cut it out early yesterday so we could go eat with the family and stuff. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get in alignment anytime soon, it seems, or at least this week. I have to wait until next week. Today's Friday now. So we're getting this done tonight. So, right now, we got the frame I told you got down to the car and here she is right now and this was a big fight when I just worked on a buddy's car the other week doing um, insert kit getting the bolt lined back up into the steering rack is very not fun because it the steering rack the weight of it wants to tilt towards the front of the car so the bolt doesn't go in straight so you got to try and twist the steering rack and get the bolt in um, and once you realize that you're usually good to go but now I have this spacer to go through as well and it's um, they didn't make them like super uh, tight tolerances so you could like wiggle it around a little bit to get it in so it's it's a pain in the butt I got the other side in so I'm hoping now this side will uh, will work but uh, yeah once once this is in and threaded then I can jack this baby up all the rest of the way have the subframe meet this hole and i'm going to go to the front one that looks like this i don't know what solution i'm going to use because this little push fitting the wiring harness um protection used to go into this, this is the only thing that they didn't i don't know well actually it'll probably go right in here where this guy is it's like an extra mounting spot so that might actually pop right down in there we'll see um when the time comes and if it does then that'll be epic actually i will be able to just use this will this pop out of there i think this comes out of there so we'll be able to just uh either stick a bolt through it or it'll fit through that hole either way we'll get her done things are coming together once once we get this bolt in we're gravy all right guys this is why you always double check the instructions the the bolts came from verkline like this with the nut side over here. But as you can see, if you try and take this bolt off, you're gonna hit the transmission. So what we gotta do is lower it back down, swap the side that this bolt is on to make sure we're able to uh, pull that out once the subframe's fully up. Already swapped the other side. Just something to look out for. I just got one bolt in the front on the other side and I was like, wait a second, let me read the instructions one more time just to make sure and give it a once look around and sure enough, uh, those were backwards. I still don't have this bolt in. I figure once the subframe's up um, a decent bit and I can remove this jack, I can get up under here a little bit better um, to do that. But now I'm gonna take the bolt back out. I only put it in my hand and then uh, lower this back down just enough to clear this, swap it, and then we're going right back up. All right, so this is the setup we have currently, just like this. I had a jack on one side uh, closer to me and I kind of moved the wood over towards that side so I could get more pressure because the subframe wants to sit like this 
so the front mounts are lower than the back so I got these ones hand tight in put a jack under this lowered this down a little bit moved the wood over and then got more pressure towards the front and then I just got that one in. you can see this one's still pretty far away with the other one in the back which you can't see from here is, is pretty close so and what it says just to get those two and you can take the jack out and then from there you kind of you'll have like some wiggle room and you'll be able to just kind of move the subframe as you wish to uh, get it to where you need to go so something I noticed since I'm not super low normally um, your whole knuckle this whole thing would sit up higher with coilovers my sway bar which I'll show you here on the other side is really close to the axle now once there's weight on wheels it, there's, I don't think it'll touch, but uh, this is something to be aware of. At first I was like, did I put the sway bar in? Like the wrong, I was really confused. And one thing I do is take pictures of everything beforehand, so I don't, but you can see right here, the axle is literally laying on, on this. <laughs> and then my adjustable arms, like again, since I raised, this, raised the uh, sway bar, I don't know if I'll be able to get my end length short enough to reach that. So I might need to, um, well, that's going the wrong way. I might have to get different end lengths, which I wouldn't be opposed to anyway. I would just get the same, well, I wouldn't be able to get the same ones, huh? Because I need shorter ones. But these are, uh, they've had their fair share of life. This one's got a nice rip in it. I'm pretty sure they're, they're popping now. I hear little noises from time to time. I just don't think this is going to be able to go short enough even well we'll see once it's on the ground it'll be a different story it'll be interesting though well anyway i just want to show you guys around the more see i got that bolt in and that's hand tight i get this in by you don't use any tools for this all right you can see right now i'm spinning it by finger and then we'll be able to bring this jack down and line the other ones up All right, guys, this is the part where I tell you this sucks. <laughs> I am um, was forced to take a break because my SD card filled up and uh, celebrate with the beer when the subframe is in. So from what I've gathered, and this is not exactly facts, I'm trying to open up the uh, 
paperwork right now. Um, basically, the subframe isn't straight up. Like the, the holes for the bolts aren't 100% straight in. That the subframe is like slightly cocked out, it seems. Like, like almost bowed out a little bit. And then because of that bowing, um, that's what keeps the subframe locked in place. Like it can't move because as you're putting the bolts in, it's bringing the subframe to to zero, I guess. Say it's off by a degree or whatever. I have no actual idea what it is, but say it's off by a degree. As you put the bolts in, it locks it into zero and it has no wiggle room. That's where like the stock subframe, it just has bigger holes. You just throw the subframe up there, the bolts go in and you have a little bit of wiggle room. You can move the subframe back and forth. With this, you can't move the subframe back and forth. So getting it installed was a very tricky situation. I had to get one in and then this back one and then this one and then really play with the, um, those three went in relatively easy and I had to play with the height of each one individually and then get a jack on this last one to, to like kind of bow, bow it in to get that bolt in. Um, and it took a long while to, to get that right because the the whole full, the holes in the body are stepped. So it's not like thread start right away. You got the hole and then you go in probably, I don't know, a millimeter or two. And that's wider than the threads. So even once you thought, like I thought I had it in at one point and I'm turning, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm getting it. And I put my finger there on the washer and it's not getting my finger any tighter. God damn, so I give it a little yank and it popped right out. So it took, I had to get back to the drawing board and move the jack around to different spots and, and figure it out. But she's in, she's locked in. Um, well, that's that, I need to torque it, go around. I went and got a, a Milwaukee marker today to mark all my bolts. I also got some nice lithium grease I'm gonna spray into all the boots, um, hopefully help. Oh man, this water's thawing out all over the paperwork that I wanted to save, so I do my alignment. Dang it. Oh, there goes my alignment. I just need to write it down on my phone, I guess. But uh, yeah, now we'll torque down the subframe and then, uh, yeah, torque down the subframe, torque down the steering rack, torque down the, whatchamacallit, the sway bar. And then we'll work on getting the uh, ball joints in. I already went ahead and did the uh, end links for the sway bar. They were kind of a pain. I have a max um, length low and they barely fit. So if you run 034 end links and you plan on doing this kit with the kinetics kit, they do fit. It's it's pushing it though. <laughs> like it, it took a lot of manpower to get it into the hole, but she's in. Um, it might be a little more preload than what I want on the, actually no. Cause once there's weight on wheels, I'll be able to extend the bar a little bit. So it may, it shouldn't be too bad. But uh, next, much, do, doing a bunch of torques. You guys don't really need to see me doing torques, but we'll fast forward to when we go to do the ball joints, I guess. Well guys, we're back a couple hours later. <laughs> wow, miserable. This is, to the point it's crazy now that i know what to do and i'm going to show you guys on the other side it'll be a little bit easier i don't have to do a bunch of guesswork and trial and error but golly getting these ball joints in was tough i didn't think it'd be able to even make it on the further out setting for the additional camber but it did and i can tell my toe is way off just sitting here uh, yeah Anyway, I'm about to show you guys the other side. If you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> um, I would definitely probably recommend, unless you have a lift or access to a lift, um, to not do this on your own. It's rough, <laughs> very rough, but let's do it. It doesn't hit the, the ball joint doesn't hit the caliper, so that's great. And you'll need a jack and you'll see. All right guys, first things first, Take this hardware out. We'll get the ball joint 
uh, well, almost ready. We're going to take the ball joint itself and get the bushing, the spherical bushing that's in it is so tough. This guy right here, it's not going to go in straight. You got to bring it in. And to do that, like I have some pretty strong hands. I can't do it with my hands at all. So take my 18 mil and I use this as leverage to bend it. Golly. Even with leverage, it's, it's so hard to freaking move. Oh my goodness. Okay. There we go. Pretty much max. And then we're going to stick it in the first set of holes so that it sticks out further. So this with this kit, the one that actually has a hex on the top goes in the middle back. Boom. These two go on the sides. Boom. Boom. The one that have the uh, six mils on top, get the washers. Put those on. Oh. This one that has the collar on it goes to the single one. And the other two, they don't have collars, they have washers. So, get those on. I can't see my hands. My head is behind. Oh. Uh, Come on. There you go. And of course these nuts on the bottom aren't the same size of one another. So that's very convenient. So those are on. Now we get the jack right here. And to tighten this is an 8 mil. These tops are 6 mil. This is a I think a 15. This is a 16. And these are 17. Something along those lines. Everything's different and complicated. <laughs> And then uh, looking up here, the ball joint, move myself. The ball joint going up gets stuck right here on this lip. So you gotta like push this in as you're bringing it up um, so it doesn't get caught. And you really gotta like wrestle it. Oh, we gotta take this off. Actually, well, the other side did. I might not have to. Well, well, we'll see if it'll let me. I don't think it will. No, it won't. We'll take this off. This is a 21, I believe. So I bring it flush with the threads, hit it with a hammer once, take it off, pull this out, and then you have free range to like move this whole knuckle around since it's not being held by the steering. Real quick, sorry headphone guys. Take it off, bring it back up. Flush so you don't damage the threads. This whole situation moves around a lot easier now that that's off. So, get your 18 mil ready and get your uh, nut ready for that. Put a ball joint, the jack over. my head on things. Ah. Look, so you gotta kind of line it up in there as you drag and then squeeze in this heat shield like I was saying. Kind of give it a wiggle as it's going up to like center it. That gets get the jacket up pretty far. I pretty much did it so that the wheel face here is pretty level of where it would be on the ground. I think that looks about good. Okay. Now we'll get that uh, the nut on there, and we'll also tighten up the sway bar end link up top um and then after that you can get this bad boy back on see it does fit it's just a pain in the butt i'm 
getting that tied up in there is quite the pain. Having one of these style wrenches really help because you can set the angle. Without that, it I don't know how you'd do it. And just even having this, it's a real pain in the butt. But now that that's done, way smoother doing it on this side. Um, we can get the tie rod back in and uh, we might just break it loose now and adjust toe a little bit on both sides because it's already I, I know it's already going to be like way off and I don't I'm really concerned as to how many threads are going to be left in there because I had to pull them out quite a bit for the 034 dog bone or 034 um, ball joints and now these are 0.2 alone with these joints plus more added camber from the arms itself we're putting a lot of camber adjustment through the bottom rather than most people do camber adjustment from the top so when doing it from the bottom you got a lot more toe you have to adjust and i just might run out of rod but we'll see next up on the list after you tighten everything you want to tighten all these things tighten this up with your eight um do the level sensor so level sensor goes right up here you got your little 10 mil you got another hole beside it how well we can see it yep see that hole that's where that screw goes into your 10 mil goes through that hole sensor faces up and then you got your ball you just kind of go in at an angle onto this and it snaps right on Well guys, as you can see, what I was scared of happening, happened. I just ran out of toe adjustment. That really sucks, so. You can only really add so much camber from the bottom until you run out of toe adjustment. And I guess I just found that limit, so. <sighs> I'm assuming I could just do it all from these and call it a day. But I guess not. I guess really it depends. I'll put it on the ground and see what the toe looks like. Um, I'm exhausted. So the Euro Sport camber pucks give, I think, 0.8 per side. We're at the order of those. Depressing. It's really upsetting. It's not Verkline's fault by any means, but. Damn it. Well, I put uh, toe settings to about where I thought they are safe, I guess. Uh, finish tightening up in here. Um, and I'm leaving not everything tight, like this bolt's loose. These aren't torqued down. This isn't torqued down. This isn't torqued down all the way. At least anything to do with the arms aren't completely torqued. Because I'm going to put the car on the ground. And I'm either going to have to move this in, which will take out 1.4 degrees, and then I'll have to bring this out a little bit more to do my math to make this 2.4 on my rough estimate. And then those, um, those Eurosport plates, whenever I order them, that should bring us to about 3.2. Um, be nice if I could just leave it where it is and it'd be perfect, but I don't know if my, my masks are that good. We'll see. I'm about to put wheels on. I'm gonna spray like uh, some lubricant into these boots real quick, front and rear, and then we'll put the car down. See how she looks. Here we are, midnight 30. Literally, I'm exhausted. So, went back to my math. I was like, all right, if I set the ball joint back that's basically adding 1.4 degrees of camber then I'd have to add a little bit via the threads to get me to 2.2 well I do that and it turns out you can't have the ball joint in that short position otherwise the two little six mil bolts they hit the knuckle so now I had to just sit here and do math by and leaving the ball joint where it's at and the extended position, how much do I gotta take out 
thread wise and then you still got to add threads to the caster side so now that I already added threads since I was going to put it in the short position I got to now take away what I just did plus more so one side I only got to do this much this side I got to do even more in on the threads this other side will go easy but this side crazy and I was trying to do it one way couldn't do it that way I thought I could just drop the ball joint out taking out that eight mil that holds the ball joint stud and just pull it down and then take the um, caster side arm off and be able to spin those individually click them back together go up on the ball joint but it doesn't work that way um, you actually just leave the ball side the ball joint side alone disconnect both or disconnect the camber one from the subframe and then disconnect the caster one from that camber arm and you can spin them put them back together put it up in the subframe Are you using it at all? If you're still with me, thank you. I'm learning a lot. And if you're doing this at home, I still don't recommend it. I think it'd be worth, even if the shop charges you double, it would be worth, um, like double as in alignment time. Well, I guess if it's gonna be at the shop, you're probably gonna pay out the ass anyway to get them to install this, but man. I mean, I'm learning a lot. This is great though, because I'm going to probably wind up ordering my own like at home alignment kit um, to save my ass in the future and whatnot. But I just wonder what you guys know what was going on. Um, my brain hurts. <laughs> All right, so I adjusted that side in 15 minutes and I had to do some extra steps to tighten the uh, ball joint. So I have this down pat now for how to. Uh, adjust caster and camber so very simple you know take off your nut get your bolt out so this arm can drop out and then you're just going to disconnect these two this nut this bolt and make sure you take off your level sensor before you do any of that so we'll do that real quick no can't do it with the left hand i'll probably break it um, yeah, so disconnect this, disconnect this, disconnect this, and uh, you'll be good to go. The only bad thing is, because uh, there's like powder coat inside these holes, you kind of got to tap this out. On the other side, you got plenty of room. This side, we got the train. So we're going to have to get uh, tricky with it. I think I got a little bit of space right there, so I should be able to get, uh, get something in there to pry it out. So, boom. Time check and song check. All right, we adjusted it. And I think my calculations are now correct. I hope. This should be about eight and a half degrees of caster. You guys look, the amount of space behind the wheel and the amount of space in front of the wheel or tire, however you want to look at it. The wheel itself and the wheel well is moved forward now. Forward and backward is caster. Now the wheel is moving forward. I felt all around it's not rubbing anywhere. I need to put it at full lock and, and give it a, a feel. But uh, it seems promising. The camber looks to be right about at where it was with the 034 ball joint, like right on the edge. If I do gotta adjust caster a little bit, I might just do like one more like half turn of camber. Um, that's only if I have to though tonight I want to be able to, I only got like two or three more things to um, what you call it torque and Loctite and I can call it a night maybe another hour if, uh, if I gotta adjust it and if not I'm gonna go up and down the driveway come back in do lock to lock see if it rubs if it doesn't then I can adjust my end links then we'll jack it back up, tighten those, tighten all the rod ends, and uh, mark everything with a paint marker. And I think we'll be done. But if not, then, you know, obviously we've got to drop it, adjust it, do that all over again, and then tighten everything up. So, ours looking good, though. I'm exhausted. 
I think I did it. <laughs> so this is full lock, doing the paper test to see if it rubs. And I already got down the ground and looked all around. The paper slides in all the way back without getting caught up on anything. So tire is good. It is gonna rub, like it already been rubbing. Like it, the fitment's been just so close. I've been just barely rubbing. Uh, so it's definitely gonna rub right here, I think, maybe. Um, but I'm not too, too worried about it. Let me uh, turn the wheel and we'll check the other side. good here definitely not rubbing anywhere back here plenty of room in the back side sorry you guys couldn't see plenty of room on the back side looking good Let's check the other side they should be that even i used the whatever measurement tool i made sure all the threads were counted and let's take a look here oh this side does look tighter it honestly does look at that right there you guys probably can't see the angle I'm seeing. It's like right up against that. But then, let's see. Might just have to do this side. Paper goes through. Getting stuck on this vent in here. This damn vent. Look to me. And we'll see. Once we get on alignment rack, how much it's all. And then I know the adjustments by turn. One turn of the one full turn of the rod for caster is 0.36, and one full turn of the camber rod is 0.14. So once I have it on paper, I can go back and get it, you know, fine tune it, get them matched exact. Um, this one's clearly a little bit further, so I might have this one a half turn. Um, further which honestly is a pretty easy fix well, a half turn 0.36 and a half would be what 3.18 so I think we'll be alright toe, toe looks good both sides so yeah do I feel like doing all that again? Not really. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get the wheel straight, um, get the sway bar and links adjusted. And the wheel's gotta come back off both sides anyway to, uh, to lock those down. And I still gotta torque the camber arm portion and where the tie, or the, it's too late. I just gotta tighten a couple more things down. <laughs> All right, guys, I dialed caster back a half a turn on this one. So it'd be like 0.18 degrees. I put the toe in just a tad more on this one. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready for a test drive. I just washed up a little bit. It's almost 3 in the morning, but uh, I think she's dialed in pretty perfectly. I mean, I went back and forth on both sides, counted so many different threads and, and measurements and just try and get everything nice and even. I like the way this looks on camera right now too. She's looking good. Getting my my sixth win. You better heard of a second win. I'm on my sixth win here. Oh my Jesus. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just set the camera up in the car real quick. See if I feel a difference or hopefully we don't just, I don't know, die in the street. Oh, there's more crackheads. Speaking of dying. I really do wish the lighting was better on this thing. Um, so I'm gonna keep my light on. 
Uh, one thing I do notice, just in park, there's like a lot more vibrate after a cold start. But once you put it in drive, it goes away. So that dog bone puck insert, whatever the hell they use, is definitely uh, way, I don't know, less movement than uh, my 034 inserts, which means I need to get motor mounts. Because once, you, if you have something stiff like that on the bottom and you have stock engine mounts, um, you're gonna tend to break things down there. So engine mounts and, uh, or engine and trans mounts for BFI, and then uh, what's it called? Eurosport camber puck things. They go inside this, this the OEM um, top hat. So it's not like a metal piece, so it keeps rubber and stuff, so it won't be all, I mean, I'm saying that like it matters. I just put all these spherical bearings in the car, but um, I like the way those sound. So we're gonna order those. And I got a strut brace on its way from Malaysia as we speak. It says it'll be here Monday, so. See what we come up with here. Listening for noises, watching out for crackheads. It's really weird to drive around with my light on. Oh, I should probably put my seatbelt on. I really apologize about the uh, lack of light. Sorry, I'm listening for sound. The steering feels like much tighter. You can feel definitely because of the, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, the spherical stuff, just suspension malfunction. You can continue driving. Sick. I don't know what that would be from. Unless I didn't plug in that, that one sensor. Uh, you know what? They probably got to be recalibrated since I raised the uh, which I'm gonna call what's up. I raised the the arms up, so my toe's definitely out of whack. It's grabbing the road. This is interesting. sand I did not want to go through. Jesus Christ, why is there so much sand there? I can definitely feel a difference. I definitely need to adjust my toe and check on that sensor. I know it's plugged in. Oh my God, this is so weird. Yeah, the car is like grabbing the road. I think that's from toe. Toe being off. It could be because it's just weird because of the caster. Alright, well that's all I got for right now. The car's real weird and it's three o'clock in the morning and I don't want to be out on the street. So thanks for watching guys. And uh, I'll definitely be doing a follow-up video. So be looking out for that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.